Hi everyone, Sam here, and for today's quick tip, I'm going to be showing you how to use a sample modeling horn in an orchestral context. Okay, so here we are in BandLab's Cakewalk, and I have the French horn up here in Contact 6, and it's version 3 as of today's day, which is in the year 2019, the beginning of 2019. And uh, this is what the instrument sounds like stock, right out of the box. No effects, no nothing. It has a little bit of the reflections, but that's stock. Like I said. All right. Very, very dry. Um, there's still a little bit of room noise in there, and that's actually coming from the early reflections. Now, for the purposes of this video, I kind of want to take off the early reflections because I want to build that stuff uh, from scratch with an external reverb um, and delays as well. Actually, we're going to build the early reflections with delays, so I'm going to take that off completely. And this is what it sounds like very, very dry. Okay, right? Now, in order to build the room for this, we're gonna have to EQ it a lot, okay? Um, the plugin itself, I don't know if you saw, has a virtual soundstage in it, which makes it probably easier because, you know, right here we just put it in the back and we kind of get you know, the illusion that it's in the back. But I like having a little bit more of um, control over that, so I like to do it with an EQ. So I'm gonna pull up the EQ here and just play it back. Um, as you see, I already have a sort of like preset from what I worked on earlier before this. So first thing I did was I high passed it. Okay. And then uh, I killed the lows with a low shelf. Should be probably a little bit more than that. Um, the reason being is that when um, as the farther a sound source gets away from you, the less bass it, it has. Not really, it, has, it loses bass, you just don't hear it as much. So, for example, if I get closer to the microphone like this, the bass frequencies are more present than if I were talking from this distance. And it's the same volume. So, this, we treat it the same way with, um, you know, spatial placement of instruments. So, French horns are pretty way in the back, all right? Usually off to the left from the conductor's point of view. So, I like to kill the uh, some of the low frequencies to sort of emulate that. Right? Without it? Okay, so um, now uh, let's actually close this. Let's open that EQ back up. Uh, this is a very handy feature of the, the Sonar EQ. It's a built-in EQ and it's just, I love that it comes out like this. It's actually really great. Now, um, <clears throat> the other thing that happens is that the low frequencies also, you know, lessen a lot, all right? Because again, the further something is away from you, the less bright it is, um, especially a lower volume. Sometimes a trumpet, a screaming trumpet can still be bright, kind of far away, but not the same as if you had it right here. So I like to kill off some of those high frequencies as well um, with a high shelf, all right? At around, I have it, you can see the settings here. I have one at about 4,000 4, and here at 150 low shelf. And this is kind of what worked for me. So. And then the other thing I like to do is that um, since we're killing a little bit, you know, not a little bit, we're killing a lot of the highs and the lows. Uh, the mid also goes along with it too, because instruments inherently the mid range is what gives it almost its presence. Um, you know, voice vo voices. You know, typically for the most part, live within that middle range. You'll get like some voices that are pretty bright. Um, some male voices are a little dark, but typically it's the mid range where all of those frequencies lie. So um, for this instrument, I kind of killed the low. You know, uh, it's here. Sorry. The um, actually I should have used this part, the low mid. It's actually the low mid. It's this right here. I don't know why I used the green one. It doesn't really matter, but um, I actually killed it around here at 500. 500 typically for you know for instruments or the voice is like the boxy kind of range. It's between you know that 400 to 800 um, or 900 sometimes range. Um, 
sorry, not 400, 300, 300 to 900 range. Uh, typically, anything, at least for me, in 300 doesn't sound great, depending on the instrument, but this is what it sounds like. All right, so now it sounds a lot further, so I'm going to A and B it. And we can exaggerate that a little further. Oops, sorry. We can exaggerate that a little further and maybe open up the cue. Typically, the rule a lot is to narrow the cue um, to kill certain frequencies, but this one's a little broader because we're trying to kill a lot of frequencies and just push it back. Now, as you notice, it also got quieter. And there's that whole thing of volume compensation, you know, when you put a compressor, if it sounds louder, people think it sounds greater, but they don't actually compensate for the volume. So you can make this a little louder. I think I'm fine with that volume there because uh, French, it's supposed to get a little quieter the further back you put it. If you ever, if you did want the same volume, then just, you know, go to um, use a gain plugin or um, if your EQ has a gain, just, you know, bring it back up to its original volume to compensate. That's called volume compensation. So pretty happy with that. It sounds far enough in the back for me. Now, the other trick I like to use for early reflection is a trick that I picked up from Mike Verda, which is uh, using a delay to create um, early reflections. So I like to use this plugin called Sound Delay. And Sound Delay is, uh, it's, it's, it, it helps you create sort of that Haas effect illusion. Okay, if you don't know what Haas effect is, you can go Google it. Probably explain it better than I do, anyways. But um, basically, it's going to reflect, it's going to use uh, rule reflections to sort of make it sound like the instrument's coming from one side or the other, either the left or the right side. In this case, if the French horn is on the left, we kind of want to get sort of that reflection on the right because in an orchestral room, a sound just bounces off of everywhere. It's not just coming from over there. I mean, we can easily go here and just pan this, you know, just to the left completely, right? But that's not very realistic. It's, you know. So what I like to do is go ahead and put this in dual mono mode then switch this to right. And then, because uh, it's, uh, we're going to be, ref you know, delaying from the right side. So um, go ahead, bring this up to round two and we'll try it there and see how that sounds. I'm gonna exaggerate the I'm gonna exaggerate the effect a little bit more. You can hear it. So as you can hear, you it's coming from the left now, but you can hear some of it on the right side, right? So I like to set it to two because it just sounds a little bit better to my ears. So now we have a sound that's you know pretty far back in the room. It has some early reflections now. It has you know pretty good positioning. Now the next thing is actually putting it in the space, right? Um, since we moved it already into Z space, we already got some left to right action. Um, now I like to use uh, I like to use various reverbs. You can use anything. You can use VSS3. I like to use uh, IQ reverb and um, I have a hall setting on it. And then I like to make it 100% wet, right? So if we're, it makes it 100%. And then, um, I like to send it 100% first and then play with it in there. So this is what it sounds like. All right, this is what it sounds like without the effects. And uh, the effects back on, the sound delay, and sorry, the sound delay. Okay, 
So basically, that's how you get in the back of the room. And now, since I killed a lot of the low frequencies and I killed some of the high, some of the mid, it'll sit better with the other instruments as well as moving it to the left. Because now, if I want to use the right, you know, the same trick for the trumpet, I can move it to the right, I can move the trombones to the right, I can put everything in its place uh, using the same reverb that I wanted to. Because you also have to treat the reverb, you know, for example. Um, you can also move the sound delay, copy it over to the reverb itself, and delay that as well. I'll sound like this. All right, guys, hopefully this quick tip has been helpful to you. Um, you know, doing this kind of stuff is very tricky. And it takes, you know, a lot of time. It takes a lot of, you know, practice and just doing it over and over again until you get, you know, the sound that you want. Uh, sometimes, you know, you have to tweak it a couple of times. But this is more or less uh, the way to do it or the way that's worked for me. Um, again, if you have any other questions, any concerns or anything you want to bring up or any point, anything, just uh, feel free to comment or message me directly and I'll try to help as much as I can. But that's it for today's quick tip and uh, see you next time.